Hello friends, welcome to another session of biochemistry and in this session we will try to finish off the, bio, uh, the vitamins first and tomorrow we will start a fresh session on uh, the molecular biology alright. So let's uh, complete the vitamins topic today and uh, go on uh, to molecular biology uh, from tomorrow. Alright, alright. So we are starting with the vitamins. Just mark your attendance so that I know all of you have come back. Send me a hi so that I know you can see it. Just write the comments whether video, audio and the screen are clearly visible or not. Okay. So we are starting with the session on vitamins. We are starting with the session on vitamins. Okay, first and foremost, what are vitamins? What are vitamins? You should know what are vitamins. So very briefly, very briefly, they are small organic molecules which facilitate metabolic pathways small organic molecules which facilitate metabolic pathway and secondly they don't provide energy they don't provide energy if you look at the old nomenclature initially they were thought to be metal minerals and they were called vital minerals they were labeled as vital minerals later when they were separated and characterized it was realized that they are not actually minerals they are not actually minerals and uh, but the name vitamins persist they are small organic molecules which facilitate the metabolic pathways which facilitate the metabolic pathways they don't provide any energy they don't provide any energy okay let us quickly Take a look at the different types of vitamins. If you talk about the different type of vitamins, we have the lipid soluble vitamins, and we uh, in the lipid soluble we have the vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. You know vitamin A, D, E, and K, and then we have the water soluble uh, vitamins, the vitamin B complex, and the vitamin C. So these are the lipid soluble and the water soluble vitamins. The biochemical names for the different vitamins, the vitamin A, the three active forms are the retinol, retinal and retinoic acid. Remember beta carotene is the precursor, it is not vitamin A, it is the precursor of vitamin A which is available in the diet. Vitamin C known as the ascorbic acid. Vitamin D known as the cholecalciferol. Vitamin D known as the cholecalciferol. The active form is the 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol. But in the blood, the level is measured for the 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol because the 125 a very short half life it has a very short half life so normally to determine the level of vitamin d we measure the 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol form of vitamin d then we have vitamin e vitamin e is also known as the tocopherol and vitamin k vitamin k is known as phyloquinone phyloquinone is the one which we get from plants it is the k1 we also have the menaquinone form the menaquinone which is k2 it is produced by conversion of uh, k1 by the gut bacteria the gut bacteria can convert it to k2 the other bacteria outside the body can also convert the k1 into k2 so k2 can either be in the gut or it can come in the diet when it is uh, produced by the bacteria and the synthetic form which is available commercially is the menadion k3 it is the menadion k3 it is the water soluble form it is the water soluble form the k3 form 
coming to the b complex in this one we had talked about all, everything except the b complex coming to the b complex collectively they are known as the anti stress vitamins if you are asked to select one which of the following is the anti stress vitamin in that case you can go for the vitamin b1 you can go for vitamin b1 b1 is individually also known as the anti stress vitamin but more correctly it is the collective name for the b complex vitamins what b2 is the riboflavin vitamin b2 is the riboflavin the b3 is niacin we had seen some of these when we are doing the carbohydrate metabolism the b5 is the pantothenic acid and b6 is pyridoxin b7 also known as vitamin h is the biotin b7 or h is biotin b9 is folic acid b9 is folic acid and b12 is cobalamin the commercially available form is known as the cyanocobalamin the commercially available form is known as the cyanocobalamin otherwise the normal name is the cobalamin so b1 b2 b3 b5 b6 b7 b9 and b12 are the different uh, vitamins in the b complex heading different vitamins in the b complex heading now there is one very important topic vitamin synthesized in the body when the question comes about synthesis in the body you have to read the question very very carefully whether it says in the body or it says by the body the answers can be different for the two reason being once you look at them then i'll describe what do you mean by in the body and by the body the b3 niacin synthesized from tryptophan we had seen when we are doing the amino acids uh, so niacin synthesized from tryptophan 60 mg of tryptophan required to synthesize 1 mg of niacin this is synthesized by the body obviously it is in the body but more accurately it is synthesized by the body b5 pantothenic acid it is synthesized by the colonic bacteria not by the body the body does not synthesize but the colonic bacteria is making the vitamin b5 inside the body so synthesis occurs in the body but not by the body so you have to read the question carefully whether it is talking about by the body or in the body now it is very important that if the colonic bacteria is synthesizing some product there should be receptors or you can say the transporters to take up that substance otherwise that substance will go base waste typically in the lion intestine mostly the uptake of the electrolytes and the water occurs the other substances are rarely absorbed so you need dedicated transporter for that particular substance otherwise it will go to waste this is applicable and true for b5 we have the uh, sodium dependent multivitamin transporter in the large intestine which identifies the b5 and uh, takes it up it identifies the b5 and uh, takes it up so sodium dependent multivitamin transporter will take up the b5 synthesized in the small in the large intestine by the colonic bacteria then we have b7 biotin again synthesized by the colonic bacteria and by the same transporter sodium dependent multivitamin transporter it is taken up in the large intestine so b5 b7 synthesized in the body but not by the body they are synthesized in the body but not by the body b12 synthesized by colonic bacteria but that part is not absorbed remember b12 absorption occurs in the small intestine in the ileum only and that too in the presence of intrinsic factor if intrinsic factor is not there the b12 absorption will not occur the absorption has to occur at the ileum so although b12 synthesis does occur by the colonic bacteria it is not absorbed by the body so most of that synthesis is futile synthesis remember the b12 synthesized in the body but not available to the body vitamin d vitamin d is synthesized from cholesterol by the body so this one is by the body it is synthesized from cholesterol by the body and after synthesis is activated in the liver and kidney uh, even the dietary form which is consumed has to be activated in the first in the liver at position 25 and at position 1 in the kidney so these are uh, 
some of the important uh, vitamins synthesized uh, in the body the vitamin k2 vitamin k2 is also synthesized by the colony bacteria in this case uh, a small amount uh, can be absorbed meaning uh, if you uh, carry out the gut sterilization there is chances that uh, the individual may suffer from vitamin k deficiency because some amount of vitamin k is absorbed from the large intestine although it is not too great but definitely some amount is absorbed from the large intestine so vitamin k that is k2 form is absorbed from the large intestine it is synthesized in the body by the colonic bacteria but not by the body so by the body we have only two when the question says which of the following vitamins are synthesized by the body we have the b3 and vitamin d all other vitamins are not synthesized by the body they are synthesized by the colonic gut bacteria colonic bacteria okay let's start with vitamin a so what i'll do i'll only be giving you the highlights of the vitamins uh, which you need to solve the questions at some places i'll talk about rda but other places i may not talk about rda depending on the importance of that particular topic for your exam okay active form of vitamin a the three active forms of uh, vitamin a we already said the retinol retinal and retinoic acid the pro form is the beta carotene the pro form is the beta carotene here i'd like to clarify one thing a large number of books and guides write vitamin a as antioxidant vitamin large number of books will write it as antioxidant vitamin this is not correct vitamin a is not an antioxidant vitamin only the beta carotene is antioxidant the precursor beta carotene is antioxidant vitamin a is not antioxidant please make note of this the vitamin a in the body is stored in the itocells itocells of liver stored in the itocells of liver recommended daily or dietary allowance is a 600 microgram per day it is a general uh, allowance for all individuals the 600 microgram per day actions some very very important actions of vitamin a the most important it is part of the wald cycle the visual cycle known as the wald cycle it is the part of wald cycle Uh, we'll see this visual cycle in physiology section when we do the vision in physiology section there we'll talk about the wald cycle we'll also cover this again in the ophthalmology section it also participates in regulation of gene expression and tissue differentiation i already told you that beta carotene will act as antioxidant in large doses it is teratogenic so must be avoided in pregnant females it has to be avoided in pregnant females even some skin applications which contain vitamin a are uh, not allowed during pregnancy because they are teratogenic they can be quickly absorbed from the skin and cross the placenta and cause the teratogenic effects in the fetus so remember avoid rather do not allow use of vitamin a during pregnancy in any significant amount better safe than sorry uh, or supplementation with vitamin a is to be avoided during pregnancy because it is teratogenic teratogenic means it will cause a malformation of the uh, fetus and the embryo it will cause a malformation of the fetus and the embryo then we come to vitamin a deficiency vitamin a deficiency is identified worldwide as the most important preventable cause of blindness particularly in india it is the most important preventable cause of blindness so you will read in uh, the community medicine that we have a program for vitamin a supplementation the details of that program i'll not cover here in a psm we'll talk about the details of the vitamin a supplementation program as a counter to the uh, widespread blindness caused due to vitamin a deficiency the earliest sign of deficiency is loss of sensitivity to green light the earliest sign of deficiency which has been asked is loss of sensitivity to the green light after that we have the impairment to adapt to dim light 
and then we have the night blindness then we have the night blindness here i'd like to mention one very important thing night blindness as shown in the movies is not like when the sunset occurs the person cannot see and when the sunrise happens then only the person can see night blindness means the person is unable to see in dim light or low light in normal light even at the night in the room if there is sufficient light the person can see the person cannot see in low light settings okay so that is the night blindness if you provide ambient light then the person can still see prolonged deficiency leads to xerophthalmia keratination of cornea and eventually blindness the detail of how vitamin a is uh, progressing in terms of uh, ophthalmic presentation will obviously be covered in ophthalmology because it is a very very important uh, clinical presentation in the ophthalmology section vitamin a deficiency also increases susceptibility to infectious diseases it also increases susceptibility to infectious diseases the retinol binding protein is considered as a negative acute phase protein it is considered as a negative acute phase protein नीचे से नीचे से उधर तक खोल देना पीछे ओके सो मूविंग ऑन vitamin a toxicity is also seen one is vitamin a deficiency when uh, adequate vitamin a is not present in the diet then we have the vitamin a deficiency but uh, excess consumption of vitamin a will also cause toxicity the toxicity will be seen in all the lipid soluble vitamins so why see if you have the water soluble vitamins if there is excess it can be lost in the urine water soluble form will go away in the urine but if it is a lipid soluble it starts getting deposited in the body and that is why uh, for the lipid soluble vitamins we have the presentation of the toxicity so in case of vitamin a toxicity please take a quick look at the clinical features acha please look at the clinical features first the cns what do you find in the cns headache nausea ataxia anorexia so the classical features of increased intracranial tension and we call it the pseudo tumor cerebri okay because it gives the appearance of space occupying lesion but when you examine uh, when you do the investigations we don't find any tumor in the brain so it is known as the pseudo tumor cerebri in the liver the hepatomegaly will be there with histological changes and hyperlipidemia remember vitamin a is stored in the liver in the ito cells then in calcium homeostasis there is thickening of long bones hypercalcemia and calcification of the soft tissues the calcinosis is occurring the calcification of the soft tissues is seen the calcification of soft tissues is seen seen and in case of skin we have the excessive dryness desquamation and alopecia alopecia means hair loss from the head Allo hair loss from the head is also seen so these are the clinical features of uh, vitamin a toxicity the clinical features of vitamin a toxicity so that is about vitamin a let's do a quick uh, recap a quick uh, recap vitamin a the uh, active names active forms are retinol retinal retinoic acid the pro form is beta carotene stored in ito cells of the liver recommended daily or dietary allowance is 600 microgram per day the most important role is as part of the visual cycle it uh, constitutes the visual pigments in retina it also has a very important role in regulation of gene expression and the tissue differentiation i already said beta carotene acts as antioxidant not the vitamin a and in large doses it is uh, teratogenic so must be avoided during pregnancy 
vitamin d deficiency is the most important preventable cause of blindness initially there is decreased sensitivity to green light followed by impaired to adapt impairment to adapt to dim light and then night blindness even then if there is no correction then we have the xerophthalmia the keratinization of cornea followed by the blindness in addition vitamin a deficiency causes increased susceptibility to infectious diseases it is the negative acute phase uh, protein meaning during uh, infections or stress conditions there will be further decrease in synthesis of retinol binding protein okay and then we have the uh, vitamin a toxicity then we have the vitamin a toxicity in vitamin a toxicity we have uh, the clinical features of pseudo tumor cerebri there is hepatomegaly and histological changes and uh, calcinosis is seen thickening of long bones hypercalcemia is seen and the skin the excessive dryness desquamation and alopecia are some of the very very important findings then we come to vitamin d vitamin d is very very frequently asked so please pay extra attention to this section major source of vitamin d is uh, skin provided uh, sufficient exposure to sunlight is there it is a conditional source if sunlight exposure is there then the vitamin d can be synthesized by the body and uh, therefore it is strictly speaking not a vitamin strictly speaking it is not a vitamin sometimes it is known as a hormone otherwise uh, dietary source uh, of vitamin d is generally not uh, sufficient so you will find that uh, individuals who are not adequately exposed to sun are very very frequently uh, vitamin d deficient and they will need uh, supplementation with vitamin d to bring their levels to an acceptable level now what are the functions of vitamin D? The most important function is regulation of calcium absorption and homeostasis. This is the classical role of vitamin D. Regulation of calcium absorption and homeostasis which is mediated by nuclear receptors that regulate the gene expression. However, recently a very important role of vitamin D has been found in regulating cell proliferation and differentiation. Lastly, large number of studies have shown that higher intake reduces risk of insulin resistance obesity and metabolic syndrome as well as it protects from various cancers like the prostate and the colorectal cancer like the prostate and the colorectal cancer The active vitamin D is the calcitriol. I'll show you how the active vitamin D is formed. It maintains plasma calcium concentration via one of the three ways. It will increase the intestinal absorption of uh, calcium along with phosphate. It reduces the excretion of calcium but not phosphate. At the level of kidney, it will uh, reabsorb the calcium. The phosphate is allowed to go. So it stimulates the reabsorption in the distal renal tubules and if required it will mobilize the bone calcium if required it will mobilize the bone calcium let's look at how it is synthesized in the skin very straightforward process the dehydrocholesterol uh, under the influence of light is quickly converted to the uh, pre vitamin d and uh, after thermal isomerization it gets converted to the cholecalciferol and that is the vitamin D3 cholecalciferol is the vitamin D3 it has uh, two hydroxyl groups so it is the sorry it's one hydroxyl group so it is the calciol it has a single hydroxyl group and therefore it is known as the calciol okay Please note if there is prolonged exposure 
to uh, the sunlight then uh, the cholecalciferol is uh, uh, further converted to uh, a soluble form of uh, the uh, uh, cholesterol form and it is not available for activation so it can be automatically isomerized uh, further therefore on prolonged exposure uh, to sunlight vitamin d toxicity does not occur okay the prolonged exposure to sunlight does not cause vitamin d toxicity because there is spontaneous uh, reconversion of the vitamin d3 once the vitamin d3 is there whether it is coming from the skin or it is coming from the diet doesn't matter once the vitamin d3 is there then it has to be activated first the activation occurs in the liver first the activation occurs in the liver and the enzyme is the 25 hydroxylase the 25 hydroxylase will attach the hydroxyl group at position at 25 so we get the 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol also known as calcidiol previously we had one alcohol group in the cholecalciferol we had solved, called it the calciol now we have two hydroxyl groups so we call it the calcidiol that is the 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol is the calcidiol and then we have the 1 alpha hydroxylase we have the 1 alpha hydroxylase it will act upon the 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol and convert it to 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol now we have three hydroxyl groups so it is known as the calcitriol we don't use the term calcitriol commonly reason being there is another enzyme the 24 hydroxylase the 24 hydroxylase which can also attach the hydroxyl group but at position 24 giving rise to the 25 hydroxy calcidiol which is also the calcitriol this form is inactive this form is inactive so to avoid confusion we don't use the term calcitriol to avoid confusion we don't use the term calcitriol rather we call it the 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol we call it the 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol the 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol can be quickly inactivated can be quickly inactivated by the action of the 25 alpha hydroxylase so what you get is the calcitetrol The calcitetrol can also be formed by the conversion of the 24 hydroxy cholecalcidiol by the enzyme 1 alpha hydroxylase. Okay, so inactivation of 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol by the enzyme 24 alpha hydroxylase again in the kidney only, again in the kidney only. So, vitamin D first converted to 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol and then converted to the active form which is the 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol this is the final active form which is acting at the level of the cells and the tissues deficiency in children causes rickets that is poor mineralization of the bone in adults it causes the osteomalacia not the osteoporosis some of the guides and books will write osteoporosis which is wrong the deficiency of vitamin d will cause osteomalacia that is demineralization of the bone it will cause osteomalacia that is demineralization of the bone again uh, the vitamin d can also cause uh, toxicity and, uh, and the causes are commonly dietary but in some individuals there can be the genetic defect where the inactivating enzyme the 24 alpha hydroxylase is not there so the 125 dihydroxy form will persist in circulation and it will result in toxicity so calcinosis occurs here also just like in vitamin a toxicity and it leads to contraction of blood vessels resulting in high blood pressure so calcinosis as well as increased blood pressure due to contraction of the blood vessels so that was vitamin d let's do a quick recap for vitamin d
major source uh, if sunlight is available that's uh, skin if sunlight is not available generally the dietary sources are poor and individual will have the vitamin d deficiency supplementation will be required because it can be synthesized uh, in the body it is generally not considered a vitamin rather because of its actions it is known as a hormone the function the primary well defined function is regulation of calcium absorption and homeostasis and this is mediated by nuclear receptors so vitamin d is the type 1 hormone it uh, it is act like type 1 hormone it goes to the nucleus and directly acts via the nuclear receptors it also has a role in regulating cell proliferation and differentiation and uh, recently now large number of studies have shown that higher intake reduce the risk of insulin resistance obesity and metabolic syndrome as well as various cancers like the prostate cancer and the colorectal cancer the active form of vitamin d the vitamin d calcitriol maintains plasma concentration by one of the three ways it will increase absorption of calcium from the intestine it will reduce the excretion of calcium by increasing the reabsorption and it will mobilize the calcium from the bone so it mobilizes the bone mineral synthesis in the skin first by light the hydroxy uh, dehydrocholesterol 7 the 7 dehydro 7 dehydrocholesterol by light is converted first to pre vitamin d and then by thermal isomerization by heat by heat it is converted to the cholecalciferol that is the uh, vitamin d3 further activation whether it is coming from the skin or from the diet first occurs in the liver by the 25 hydroxylase where we get the 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol i had mentioned that this is the form which is used for uh, estimation of vitamin d levels in the body because of its longer half life subsequently the 25 hydroxy form is uh, converted to the 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol by the 1 hydroxylase calcidol 1 hydroxylase which is there in the kidney the active form can be inactivated quickly by the action of 24 hydroxylase which converts the 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol to the calcitetrol calcitetrol is the inactive form of vitamin d3 so the half life of the calcitriol is measured in minutes about 3 to 5 minutes is the half life for calcitriol because it is very quickly inactivated very quickly it is inactivated the vitamin a deficiency in children will cause rickets the details or the by uh, the details of rickets in terms of uh, the radio imaging picture the clinical picture will see in uh, the pediatrics not here in adults it causes the osteomalacia that is demineralization of bone toxicity also occurs just like it was occurring in uh, vitamin a Uh, primarily it can be dietary lot of extra supplementation of vitamin d has been taken by the individual uh, rarely it can be genetic defect in the degrading or the inactivating enzyme that is the 24 hydroxylase it leads to contraction of blood vessels which causes increase in the blood pressure and just like vitamin a toxicity it causes the calcinosis or the calcification of the soft tissues then you come to vitamin e uh at the outset i'll tell you that vitamin e uh functions are not clear cut and uh, moreover the deficiency is not well documented the vitamin e is another lipid soluble vitamin and it is the antioxidant vitamin in cell membrane it is a lipid soluble antioxidant vitamin in the cell membrane there are two types of antioxidant chain preventing and the chain breaking so vitamin e is the chain breaking antioxidant it is a chain breaking antioxidant it is a free radical trapping antioxidant in cell membrane and plasma lipoprotein the recycling of vitamin e is done by vitamin c once it is oxidized it can be uh, reduced again by the vitamin c it has a very important role in cell signaling and dietary deficiency i told you is unknown it is uh, suggested that deficiency will cause neurological dysfunction then we come to vitamin k vitamin k is very very vital for the carboxylation of glutamate residue in a large number of proteins 
okay so the carboxylation of the glutamate residue gives rise to the gamma carboxy glutamate the gamma carboxy glutamate is required for activation of a large number of proteins okay so vitamin k will cause the carboxylation of glutamate residue and generate the gamma carboxy glutamate written as the gla the two enzymes involved in this carboxylation of glutamate residues are the vitamin k epoxide reductase the vitamin k epoxide reductase which is warfarin sensitive and the warfarin insensitive quinone reductase warfarin insensitive quinone reductase so these two uh, vitamins are involved in primarily in the metabolism of uh, vitamin k and if there is deficiency of vitamin k there will be impaired blood clotting and hemorrhagic disease because one of the very important proteins which need to be activated by the uh, gamma carboxylation are the uh, clotting factors uh, 2 7 9 and 10 are the clotting factors which require the activation so like i said it is required for action of clotting factors 2 7 9 and 10 as well as the anti clotting factors uh, protein c and protein s the gamma carboxy glutamate uh, chelates the calcium ions and it permits the binding with the cell membrane so the gamma carboxy glutamate required here for activation the prolonged antibiotic therapy will cause the gut sterilization and it can be one of the minor causes for deficiency of vitamin k vitamin k also affects bone health by activating calcium binding protein some of the proteins which are activated are osteocalcin and the matrix uh, protein which contain the gamma carboxy glutamate in fact the deficiency of vitamin k is identified by measuring the undercarboxylated osteocalcin in the blood the undercarboxylated osteocalcin blood levels provide an index of vitamin k status if this value is high then vitamin k deficiency is there if this value is low then vitamin k deficiency is not there so under carboxylated osteocalcin blood levels provide an index for vitamin k status in addition in the kidney the nephrocalcin is also undergoing the carboxylation so which all proteins factor 2 7 9 and 10 protein c and s the uh, uh, bone osteocalcin and the matrix gla protein and the nephrocalcin these are some of the important uh, proteins which need to undergo gamma carboxylation under the influence of the vitamin k so that was the lipid soluble vitamins quickly i'll do the recap for vitamin k the vitamin k uh, we have already said uh, it can be of three types vitamin k1 k2 k3 phylloquinone and the k2 form and uh, the uh, k3 form which is the menadione the water soluble form the vitamin k is primarily required for carboxylation of glutamate residue in the post synthetic modification of large number of proteins it results in formation of the gamma carboxy glutamate the two enzymes required in vitamin k metabolism are the vitamin k epoxide reductase which is warfarin sensitive this epoxide reductase question has been asked twice in the neat exam and the warfarin sensitive uh, quinone reductase it helps to bypass the uh, um, uh, warfarin uh, uh, block if there is deficiency there will be impaired blood clotting and the hemorrhagic disease vitamin k is required for activation of large number of proteins these are factor 2 7 9 and 10 as well as protein c and s the gamma carboxy glutamate uh, uh, amino acid will chelate the calcium ion and thereby permits binding to the membrane so that the clot can adhere prolonged antibiotic therapy can be a minor cause for deficiency and uh, the vitamin k uh, resulting carboxylation also affects bone health because it activates the osteocalcin and the matrix gla protein under carboxylated osteocalcin blood level is used to determine the vitamin k levels the nephrocalcin in the kidney is also undergoing the carboxylation the gamma carboxylation by the vitamin k and now we come to the water soluble vitamins starting with thymine that is vitamin b1 
Vitamin B1 is unique among all the vitamins. Vitamin B1 as well as vitamin B2. Vitamin B1 and vitamin B2. Okay, so why are they unique? Because their RDA, the recommended dietary or the daily allowance is not dependent on the body weight. Whenever we talk about RDA, we talk in terms of body weight. But for uh, the vitamin B1 and vitamin B2, the RDA is 0.5 milligram per thousand kilocalorie of energy intake. It is per thousand kilocalorie for of energy intake. Okay, thymine levels are monitored by the erythrocyte transketolase. The thymine levels are monitored by the erythrocyte transketolase. Vitamin K, we had said by the osteocalcin under carboxylate or osteocalcin level, but vitamin B1 by measuring the activity of erythrocyte transketolase before giving the supplement of vitamin B1. Functions very very important functions most of this we have already enumerated when we are doing the carbide metabolism The pyruvate dehydrogenase requires the thymine pyrophosphate the alpha ketoglutate dehydrogenase in the Krebs cycle requires the uh, Thymine pyrophosphate the transketolase in HMP shunt requires the thymine pyrophosphate and the branch chain ketoacid dehydrogenase in the branch chain amino acid metabolism also requires the uh, thymine pyrophosphate in addition the Thymine is required for acetylcholine uh, formation and it helps to regulate the chloride channel in nerve conduction. It helps to regulate the chloride channel in nerve conduction. So thymine is very very important for energy metabolism. Thymine is very very important for energy metabolism and deficiency results in two common disorders that is the beriberi and the vernicase encephalopathy the beriberi and the vernicase encephalopathy the common cause for deficiency of thymine we had seen previously also is a chronic alcoholism two reasons in chronic alcoholism the dietary intake is poor in addition the thymine uh, Absorption is inhibited by alcohol. So in chronic alcoholics, thymine deficiency is likely to be there. Let's look at the two disorders one by one. Starting with the beriberi. So beriberi can be of two types. First is the dry beriberi. The dry beriberi involves the CNS in the form of paresthesia, general weakness, atrophy, foot and wrist drop. The drops are characteristic the foot and wrist drop in dry beriberi please note when we say dry beriberi it is involving the uh, cns so dry beriberi is the name for cluster of cns symptoms it is the name for cluster of cns symptoms and then we have what is known as the wet beriberi wet beriberi is named for the cluster of symptoms of the cvs one of the most characteristic findings is the high output cardiac failure other findings include palpitation, the tachycardia, aortic regurgitation and edema in the limbs. Please note that uh, although we have described the dry beriberi and wet beriberi involving the CNS and the CN CVS, it does not mean that if you have the symptoms of the dry beriberi, the symptoms of the wet beriberi may not be there. It is not necessary. They can occur simultaneously. The symptoms of dry and wet beriberi may occur simultaneously. All right, so they may occur simultaneously, so you have to keep that in mind. In addition, we see a variant of beriberi in uh, the infants, which we call the infantile or the acute beriberi. This will be seen only when the mother's milk is deficient in B1. It will occur when the mother herself is a chronic alcoholic and it, she has a vitamin B1 deficiency. In that case, the vitamin B1 cannot appear in the milk because the mother has, is deficient. She cannot uh, pass on the vitamin B1. So this was the beriberi. The second is the vernicase encephalopathy. So let's go to the vernicase encephalopathy.
again it will be seen in the chronic alcoholics and uh, the characteristic findings are global confusion and ophthalmoplegia the characteristic findings are global confusion and ophthalmoplegia sometimes the wernicke encephalopathy can be complicated with the psychosis and the condition is known as wernicke korsakoff psychosis the condition will be named as wernicke korsakoff psychosis the now we come to vitamin b2 a quick recap of vitamin b1 rda we said for b1 as well as riboflavin 0.5 mg per 1000 kcal of energy intake the thiamine deficiency can be monitored by the erythrocyte transcutaneous activity measurement the functions it is a part of the pervert dehydrogenase the alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase the transcutaneous the branch in ketose dehydrogenase it is also required for the acetylcholine formation and it helps to regulate the chloride channel conduction it is very very important for energy metabolism deficiency results in the beriberi and the wernicke encephalopathy in beriberi we have the dry beriberi and we have the wet beriberi dry beriberi beri involves the cns the wet beriberi involves the cvs characteristic finding in dry beriberi will be the tender is drop in the wet beriberi it will be the high output cardiac failure in addition we have what is known as the infantile beriberi it is seen in those infants where the mother herself is deficient in vitamin b1 and then we have the wernicke encephalopathy again seen in chronic alcoholics one of the important findings are the global confusion and ophthalmoplegia and if psychosis is present we call the condition as wernicke korsakoff psychosis we call the condition as wernicke korsakoff psychosis so that's vitamin b1 let's move on to vitamin b2 please note vitamin b1 is very very commonly coming in your exam as a clinical case in the last 4 5 years we have seen this question coming at least 4 times either as a straight line question or as a clinical case the whole presentation is there that uh, what is the uh, position of the per person whether he is living alone what type of food he is eating and uh, then the presentations of the either wet very 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 where they describe the high output cardiac failure the edema in the limbs can be mentioned so all that can be mentioned and they may even describe the enzyme activity to help you narrow down the diagnosis we come to riboflavin that is vitamin b2 Riboflavin is a part of a flavin containing enzyme so you see there are large number of enzymes which require the riboflavin wherever you make use of the fad it implies you are making use it implies you are making use of the riboflavin so wherever we have the use of the fad or fads2 we are making use of the uh, riboflavin okay large number of enzymes are there for example the succinate dehydrogenase for example in beta oxidation we had seen and the fads2 is required rda we had said previously just like uh, the thiamine the rda is 0.5 mg per 1000 kcal of energy intake all right so this also has a very important role in energy metabolism the main dietary source of riboflavin are milk and dairy products and deficiency is identified by activity of erythrocyte glutathione reductase so for b1 it is a transcutaneous and for b2 it is the glutathione reductase again i'll say the riboflavin deficiency is also being asked commonly as a clinical case deficiency of vitamin b1 b2 and b3 these three are commonly asked as clinical case in exam in the last 4 5 years we have seen at least one of them will always be there in your paper sometimes b1 and b2 both can be there in your paper so riboflavin deficiency is known as the riboflavin a riboflavinosis the deficiency is known as a riboflavinosis all right the primary finding 
is stomatitis the primary finding is stomatitis this stomatitis is similar to what we'll see in uh, uh, the pellagra that is vitamin b3 deficiency so what is the presentation painful red tongue with sore throat this painful red tongue in some older books you'll find is written as beefy tongue painful red tongue with sore throat and that is the beefy tongue chapped and fissured lips known as chelosis the chapped and fissured lips known as chelosis the inflammation of corners of mouth known as angular stomatitis see all of this will occur if there is stress in stress the consumption of vitamins increases and if there is a borderline case there the deficiency will be quickly precipitated for example when you're preparing for the exam suddenly lockdown is there and your father has been unable to send you the pocket money lockdown is there and you're not able to meet your uh, girlfriend or boyfriend so that time there's a lot of stress and this angular stomatitis can appear in uh, those uh, scenarios okay in addition uh, we have uh, the anemia the anemia is described as normocytic normochromic c n c n c anemia the description is n c n c anemia in addition the seborrheic dermatitis is seen because the stomatitis that is seen here is also seen in pellagra at first look you may confuse it with pellagra and the deficiency sometimes is known as pellagra sine pellagra means looks like pellagra but it is not pellagra deficiency is sometimes known as pellagra sine pellagra okay so that was vitamin b2 remember b1 and b2 deficiency are being commonly asked as a clinical case i very quickly go through the riboflavin that is b2 again flavin containing enzymes or the flavor proteins uh, require the riboflavin meaning anywhere you require the fat or fats2 we are making use of the vitamin b2 that is riboflavin rda just like the vitamin b1 is 0.5 mg per 1000 kcal of energy intake therefore it is another vitamin involved in the energy metabolism the main dietary source of the riboflavin are milk and dairy products and the deficiency can be monitored by measuring the activity of erythrocyte glutathione reductase Riboflavin deficiency is known as a riboflavinosis, which results primarily in the stomatitis. It results primarily in stomatitis. The findings include the painful red tongue with sore throat, the chapped and fissured lips that is chelosis, inflammation of the corners of a mouth that is angular stomatitis, and the normochromic normocytic anemia. In addition, the seborrheic dermatitis may be seen. because the stomatitis is similar to that of pellagra it has also been caused called as pellagra sine pellagra looks like pellagra but it is not pellagra and then we come to niacin niacin is vitamin b3 the biological activity of niacin is present in the nicotinic acid and the nicotin amide the nicotinic acid and the nicotine amide the fungal forms of vitamin b3 are nad and nadp we have seen the nadh and the nadph nad is also the source for the covalent modification of protein that is the adp ribosylation nad is the source for the adp ribosylation it also has an important role in intracellular calcium regulation and cell signaling it has important role in intracellular calcium regulation and cell signaling we already said 60 mg of tryptophan can be converted to 1 mg of niacin in the body niacin is one of the two vitamins synthesized by the body first was vitamin d and second is the vitamin b3 that is niacin it is synthesized by the body so like i said the 60 mg of tryptophan is converted to 1 mg of niacin please note that excess of niacin can also cause toxicity because its effect is uh, 
long lasting it can cause dilatation of blood vessels and flushing along with skin irritation it causes liver damage and it can cause macular edema and macular cyst at supra physiological doses at supra physiological doses it can cause macular edema and macular cyst now more commonly the white proxy is seen rarely more commonly what we see is the vitamin b3 deficiency that is pellagra characteristic of pellagra is the 3d's the 3d's means diarrhea dermatitis and dementia the type of dementia is the depressive psychosis in addition to this like i mentioned we have the stomatitis we have the glossitis and the stomatitis in addition to the diarrhea dementia and dermatitis if untreated the various d's will fuse together to form the big d that is death if untreated we get the fourth d that is death a very characteristic finding in these individuals is the casal collar or the casal necklace scaly pigmentation is seen in the neck in severe case of pellagra along the dermatome c3 and c4 just two years back last year in fact we had this question where they had given the image of the casal collar and you were asked 25 in which amino acid deficiency we are likely to get this appearance of the casal collar classically the pellagra has been common in maize or sorghum eaters reason being the leucin which is present in large amount in these foods can interfere with the conversion of the tryptophan to niacin in addition these substances are also poor in the tryptophan content so leucin content interferes with the conversion and tryptophan content is low more recently we find the deficiency to appear in the hartnuss disease and in the carcinoid syndrome we had seen in the hartnuss disease there is loss of the tryptophan therefore a sufficient tryptophan is not available for conversion into the niacin in carcinoid syndrome the tryptophan is diverted towards the synthesis of the intermediates the 5 hydroxy tryptamine is required uh, is synthesized from the tryptophan so in both these two conditions there is a gross uh, deficiency of the tryptophan when tryptophan is not there sufficient amount of niacin cannot uh, be formed nowadays the population consuming exclusively maize or sorghum is somewhat rare so more commonly you will find pellagra in patients of hartnuss disease and carcinoid syndrome so if you see the casal collar casal necklace you take the history and you are not finding any dietary deficiency or excess consumption of maize or sorghum like that then you should start uh, uh, suspecting either the hartnum disease or the carcinoid syndrome and then we come to vitamin b5 let's quickly take a look at the b3 i'll revise it very quickly B3 the biological activity is present in the nicotinic acid and nicotinamide the functional form are NAD and NADP NAD is also the source for the covalent modification of proteins that is the ADP ribosylation it has role in intracellular calcium regulation and cell signaling 60 mg of tryptophan can be converted to 1 mg of niacin in the body niacin is one of the few vitamins which are water soluble and still they can be toxic at high doses it causes dilatation of blood vessel and flushing in addition to the skin irritation it can cause liver damage and at supra physiological doses it can cause macular edema and the macular cyst it can cause the macular edema and the macular cyst more commonly what we see is the pellagra pellagra presents with the 3d's the diarrhea dementia which is a depressive psychosis and the dermatitis it is a photosensitive type of dermatitis in addition we had mentioned there is the stomatitis we find the glossitis and the stomatitis if you don't treat these patients all of these complications will result in the death of the patient which is also known as the fourth d of pellagra a classical finding is the casal collar or necklace which is the scaly pigmented rash around the dermatome c3 c4 okay more commonly in the past it has been seen in maize or sorghum eaters in which the leucine content is high and the tryptophan content is low leucine interferes with the conversion of tryptophan to niacin in addition there are other factors which will affect this conversion we'll see them later
the heart nerve disease uh, results in tryptophan deficiency so again pellagra can be there karsner syndrome also consumes large amount of tryptophan so here also the pellagra may be seen moving on to vitamin b5 that is the pantothenic acid it is the part of acyl carrier protein in fatty acid synthesis and it is required for the synthesis of coenzyme a pantothenic acid is required for the synthesis of coenzyme a the coenzyme a is uh, used in the following reactions in the citric acid cycle first for the formation of uh, the acetyl coenzyme a and later on for the formation of the succinyl coenzyme a strictly speaking only succinyl coenzyme a because formation of acetyl coenzyme a is actually the link reaction then in fatty acid oxidation to form again the acetyl coenzyme a various acetylations and in the cholesterol synthesis where we get the intermediate hmg coa okay hydroxymethyl luteal coenzyme a that is an intermediate where we are making use of the coa so pantothenic acid forms the uh, coenzyme a which is useful in a large number of reactions just like vitamin e the deficiency of uh, the b5 is unknown in the past it has been uh, uh, attributed to cause the nutritional melalgia also known as burning food syndrome but uh, in the later research when we've done the detailed research it has not uh, been found to be true this burning food syndrome uh, is not actually due to the b5 deficiency however in the past it was uh, ascribed to the vitamin b5 deficiency no longer accepted this concept is no longer accepted so pantothenic acid will uh, form the acyl carrier protein and the coenzyme a vitamin b6 very very important pyridoxal the active form is pyridoxal phosphate the various structures which are active pyridoxin pyridoxal pyridoxamin along with their phosphates therefore we have six different forms which show the biological activity pyridoxin pyridoxal and pyridoxamine the most active coenzyme form is the pyridoxal phosphate we'll see it is required in large number of reactions it is the most important function as coenzyme for glycogen phosphorylase we had seen this where it is acting as the donor of phosphate the phosphate will be used to cleave the last glucose and it is released as the glucose one phosphate deficiency status is identified by measuring the erythrocyte transaminase for transamination also we require the pyridoxal phosphate so one we talked about the transketolase the transketolase was for b1 then we talked about the glutathion reductase glutathione reductase was for vitamin b2 and now we are talking about the erythrocyte transaminases and this is for vitamin b6 so these are some of the erythrocytic enzymes which can be used to monitor the vitamin deficiency the erythrocyte transketolase monitors the vitamin b1 deficiency the erythrocyte glutathione reductase monitors the vitamin b2 deficiency and the erythrocyte transaminases are used to monitor the vitamin b6 deficiency the pyridoxal phosphate is required as the coenzyme or cofactor in a very large number of reactions which are very very frequently asked in your exam let's quickly take a look at which uh, process will require the pyridoxal phosphate broadly speaking it is required for the transamination deamination and decarboxylation that is why we had used the enzyme transaminase to determine the concentration of vitamin b6 some specific examples include the synthesis of catecholamine the serotonin and gaba the synthesis of serine the enzyme serine racemase the metabolism of methionine and cysteine both of them are sulfur containing amino acids in their breakdown we have two common enzymes the cysteine synthase and cysteine both of them require the pyridoxal phosphate 
in the synthesis of selenocysteine in the synthesis of selenocysteine we require the pyridoxal phosphate then for from conversion of tryptophan to niacin meaning of vitamin b6 is deficient then also we can get the pellagra if vitamin b6 deficiency is there then also we can get the pellagra we already seen that it is required for glycogenolysis by the enzyme glycogen phosphorylase it is required in the synthesis of sphingolipids and we had seen in heme synthesis it is required the paradoxal phosphate is required for activating the glycine in first step in heme synthesis so these are some of the very important biochemical reactions where vitamin b6 is utilized we'll quickly do a recap for vitamin b6 okay b6 activity shown by the pyridoxine pyridoxal pyridoxamine and their phosphate is giving us a total of six active forms the most active coenzyme form is the pyridoxal 5 phosphate and the most important reaction where it is acting as the coenzyme is the glycogen phosphorylase enzyme for the glycogen phosphorylase enzyme which cleaves the glycogen deficiency state is identified by measuring the erythrocyte transaminase activity various reactions where the pyridoxin uh, is required in the form of pyridoxal phosphate include the transamination deamination decarboxylation in the biosynthesis of catecholamine serotonin gaba in metabolism serine by the enzyme serine racemase in the breakdown of methionine and cysteine by the enzyme cysteothionine synthase and the cysteothionase in the biosynthesis of selenocysteine in conversion of tryptophan to niacin whereby it can also cause pellagra in the glycogenolysis in the sphingolipid formation and in the heme synthesis pyridoxine deficiency can occur due to consumption of drugs the most common cause in india is the isoniazid so mostly the pyridoxine deficiency is drug induced mostly it is drug induced in case of pyridoxine deficiency what we find increased sensitivity to actions of low concentration of estrogen androgen cortisol and vitamin d in addition we find abnormalities in the tryptophan and methionine metabolism we had seen in tryptophan conversion to niacin and metabolism of methionine and cysteine also we require the pyridoxal phosphate deficiency will classically present with peripheral neuropathy now this is not a diagnostic feature because in paradoxin toxicity also there is neuropathy so the other features the sideroblastic anemia and urinary findings of homocysteinuria oxaluria xanthinuria become equally important in identifying pyridoxin deficiency please note toxicity of pyridoxin also causes a neuropathy okay so this is about the uh, pyridoxin one very important question which comes here that in case of isoniazid when there is pyridoxin deficiency which group of individuals or which group of patients are more likely to present with pyridoxin deficiency your options are the slow acetylators or the fast acetylators out of the two, two groups which individuals are more likely to present with pyridoxine deficiency when the isoniazid is being provided or it is being given for the treatment of the tuberculosis i am sure you know that isoniazid is the drug for tuberculosis and because of the wide prevalence of tuberculosis in our country it is very commonly consumed by large number of patients and if supplementation with pyridoxine is not there the deficiency is quite likely to occur but in which group of individuals the deficiency will occur first whether in the slow acetylators or in the fast acetylators you have to tell me where the deficiency will occur first in the slow acetylators or in the fast acetylators quickly tell me the answer slow or fast slow acetylators or the fast acetylators
no one wants to give the answer please note the answer is not the fast acetylators it is one of the most commonly wrong answer that we give the answer is not the fast acetylator rather it is the slow acetylators where we are more likely to see the pyridoxin deficiency the reason is very straightforward in metabolism of isoniazid there is an intermediate very good very good there is an intermediate which has the potential to combine with pyridoxin so if we have the fast acetylators of the intermediate intermediate has a short half life it cannot combine with the pyridoxin but if we have the slow acetylators the intermediate will have a longer half life and therefore it gets time to combine with the pyridoxin thereby causing pyridoxin deficiency testing the individual for slow and fast acetylator is not very cheap so the cheaper option is give the supplementation of pyridoxin to all other individuals testing will be costlier than giving the supplementation of pyridoxin to all the individuals so whenever we start an individual on treatment with isoniazid we have to ensure that the drug regime also includes the supplementation with a pyridoxin it is included by default nowadays so very unlikely that this mistake will happen but you have to emphasize to the patient that the pyridoxin tablet has to be consumed without fail with the isoniazid tablet please note we can't give a loading dose when we are starting the isoniazid why because the toxicity also causes neuropathy so we cannot induce the toxicity uh, because it will result in a neuropathy we cannot give a loading dose to the patients who in whom we are starting the isoniazid treatment and then we come to biotin biotin is known as vitamin b7 sometimes it is also known as the vitamin h sometimes it is also known as the vitamin h biotin is primarily required for the purpose of carboxylation it is the most important coenzyme for carboxylation almost all carboxylation will uh, require the biotin so which are the carboxylases present in the human body where the biotin will be required first the acetyl coenzyme a carboxylase the acetyl coenzyme a carboxylase will convert the acetyl coenzyme a to malonyl coenzyme a, which is the first step in the fatty acid synthesis then the pyruvate carboxylase which converts the pyruvate to oxalic state in the gluconeogenesis then we have the propenyl coenzyme a carboxylase we had seen this the propenyl coenzyme a carboxylase converts the propenyl propenyl coenzyme a in the methyl malonyl coenzyme a and then we have the methyl propenyl coenzyme a carboxylase just remember this name it is used in the metabolism of uh, carbon skeleton of the amino acids the methyl propenyl coenzyme a carboxylase will not go into the details i told you will not go into the metabolism of the carbon skeleton of the amino acids so these are the four names these are the four enzymes uh, which are carrying out the carboxylation and require biotin for their optimal activity so biotin plays a role in uh, regulation of cell cycle also and it is widely distributed in food therefore dietary deficiency is unlikely only in the special cases the dietary deficiency can occur for example when a person starts consuming very large amount of egg white or if the person is on prolonged parental nutrition where the biotin supplementation is not adequate all right so it is widely distributed in food dietary deficiency is unknown this question where it results in deficiency when large amount of egg white is consumed has been asked multiple times please note the egg white contains a substance called avidin egg white contains a substance called avidin however when you cook the egg whether you are making uh, the boiled egg or you are making a poach or you are making a full fry when you are making an omelet you are making a scrambled egg when you heat the egg the avidin gets destroyed however if you eat the raw egg the avidin will be there and it will combine with biotin and prevent the absorption remember biotin was one of those uh, vitamins which was synthesized in the large intestine and also absorbed from the large intestine 
okay so you need to consume very large amount of egg white before uh, this avidin will be able to prevent the complete absorption of biotin and typically we require a dozen egg being consumed regularly daily so this is a, a somewhat a fat or you can say the dietary practice in individuals who have recently started uh, going to the gym or started doing the exercise as a source of protein a lot of uh, the uh, ad hoc gym trainers will tell them so that you should eat the raw egg white raw egg white is a very very good source of protein you eat the raw egg white and uh, suddenly you will have a lot of uh, good uh, body mass you don't need other protein supplementation so a person who has recently started gym uh, would uh, get the advice uh, from uh, one of his trainers that you eat the raw egg white about 8 to 12 every day and that is when the person will land up in the biotin deficiency we will need to supplement the biotin in these individuals to immediately uh, reactivate these enzymes because in the absence of biotin these enzymes will not be working A quick recap of the biotin it is a coenzyme for the carboxylase enzymes the style coenzyme a carboxylase the pyruvate carboxylase the propanyl coenzyme a carboxylase and the methyl crotonyl coenzyme a carboxylase it also plays a regulation in cell cycle it is widely distributed in food and dietary deficiency is unknown it can occur in prolonged parental nutrition the dietary deficiency or it can occur with consumption of large amount of uncooked egg white in the range of about a dozen eggs reason being the raw egg white will contain avidin it binds to the biotin and prevent absorption both in the small intestine as well as in the large intestine in both the places it will prevent the absorption coming to the folic acid and the cobalamin b9 and b12 please note that the b9 and b12 are the vitamins of uh, 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 the blood circulation of uh, the rbc and wbc so uh, more details of the b9 and b12 will be covered in the hematology section in pathology but i'll give a brief important biochemical overview of the b9 and the b12 the various forms of tetrahydrofolate are the active form of folic acid all right so the various different names of tetrahydrofolate can be n5 for mild tetrahydrofolate form amino tetrahydrofolate methyl tetrahydrofolate n10 for mild tetrahydrofolate you can have the methylene tetrahydrofolate or you can have the methenyl tetrahydrofolate so all these uh, prefixes can be used with a tetrahydrofolate representing the active form of the folic acid now there are two things here which you have to keep in mind the serine is the most important source of the substituted folate meaning the methyl group coming into the uh, folic group but the major point of entry for one carbon fragment is the methylene tetrahydrofolate so you have to read the statement of the question carefully what are they asking are they asking about the source or are they asking about the point of entry okay in addition are they asking about the source of tetrahydrofolate for tissue so these are three different questions the important source of the methyl group important source of methyl group is the serine the point of entry is the methylene tetrahydrofolate the major source of tetrahydrofolate is the methyl tetrahydrofolate the methyl tetrahydrofolate is recycled to give us the tetrahydrofolate so accordingly you will read the question and then you will mark the answer whether they are asking about the donor of the methyl group they are asking about uh, in what form it enters the metabolism or from where the tetrahydrofolate is uh, regenerated so accordingly the different answers will be there the marker for folic acid deficiency is the figlu it is an intermediate of histidine metabolism so what we do we give a loading dose of histidine and then we measure the level of figlu in these patients so what will happen there will be figlu accumulation in these patients if the vitamin b9 is not there or it is deficient in the individuals in addition deficiency during pregnancy predisposes to the meningomyelocele
predisposes to meningomyelocele. So, if a female is uh, planning a pregnancy or she has just become pregnant, it is advised that the B9 supplementation must be given to these females, particularly if uh, the female are uh, on uh, the higher side of age group, maybe uh, 32 plus or 35 plus, there will have more chances of these uh, deficiencies. So, supplementation of B9 before planning pregnancy or in the first trimester of pregnancy is advised to uh, decrease the chances of the meningomyelocele to decrease the chances of uh, spinal cord disorders please note the folic acid deficiency also causes the deficiency causes megaloblastic it causes the megaloblastic anemia it causes the megaloblastic anemia now there are various inhibitors of folate metabolism uh, uh, we, we can use the inhibitors of folate metabolism in multiple ways for example the methotrexate is used for cancer chemotherapy the trimethoprim which is uh, specific for uh, the tetrahydrofolate dihydrofolate reductase of the bacteria is used as the antibacterial drug Similarly, the pyrimethamine, which is specific for the uh, enzyme in the uh, malarial parasite, it is used as the anti-malarial drug. For the conversion of the methyl tetrahydrofolate to the tetrahydrofolate, which we had so said was the primary source of the tetrahydrofolate, we require the B12. We require the B12. So, what happens if there is B12 deficiency? The methyl tetrahydrofolate will remain as such, the tetrahydrofolate will not become available and there will be functional folate deficiency. This is what is known as the folate trap. The folate trap question is very commonly asked. So, you should remember the folate trap is blocking the tetrahydrofolate in the form of methyl THF. The conversion of methyl THF to THF requires the vitamin B12. If B12 is not there, then the methyl THF will exist and tetrahydrofolate will not be formed. This is known as the folate trap. What is the problem here? In folate trap, we find the megaloblastic anemia. We find the megaloblastic anemia. And sometimes without testing, we can give the supplementation of the B9. In this case, the folate trap will be overcome, means extra B9 you have given, which will uh, become available as the folate and uh, the requirement will be fulfilled. But please note, the B12 deficiency will be exaggerated. Whatever B12 is there will now we start getting used for this uh, recycling of the excess uh, folate that you provided. And the problem of B12 which relates to the neurological symptoms will be exaggerated. So please note, before giving the folic acid supplementation, you have to ensure that B12 deficiency is not there. If you are unable to ensure that B12 deficiency is there or not, then you must supplement with vitamin B12 also. So you have to choose one. Either you determine that B12 deficiency is not there or if you cannot do that, then you add the B12 to the supplementation. Like I said, the folate deficiency causes the megaloblastic anemia. In addition, the folate supplementation can increase the risk of developing the colorectal cancer. But not in all people. Only in those people who have the pre-existing uh, pre-neoplastic uh, colorectal polyps. Those individuals who have the pre-existing uh, pre-neoplastic colorectal polyps, in those individuals, if we give the folate supplementation, we, it is seen that there is increased risk of developing the colorectal cancer, increased risk of developing the colorectal cancer. So let's quickly do the uh, recap for uh, folic acid. The active forms are the various types of tetrahydrofolate. They can be the formyl, formimino, methyl group, methylene group, methenyl group. The formyl forms can be attached at N5 or they can be attached at the N10 form. The methyl group is obtained from serine. The first activated uh, tetrahydrofolate is the methylene tetrahydrofolate. 
the tetrahydrofolate is commonly obtained by the recycling of the methyl tetrahydrofolate by the recycling of the methyl tetrahydrofolate by b12 by b12 figlo is the marker of intercellular level of a folate we give a loading dose of histidine and then measure the figlo levels in the urine if they are elevated it indicates the deficiency of vitamin b9 the metabolism of figlo requires the b9 deficiency during pregnancy predisposes to meningomyositis therefore before planning pregnancy or in the first trimester of pregnancy the b9 supplementation is advised in all individuals various drugs can inhibit the folate metabolism in different organisms for example in humans the methotrexate will inhibit the folate metabolism it is used for cancer chemotherapy trimethoprim inhibits the bacterial form of the dihydrofolate reductase therefore it is used as the antibacterial drug and paramethamine for the malarial parasite the anti malarial drug but when b12 deficiency i told you is uh, uh, causing the functional folate deficiency because it is required for conversion of methyl tetrahydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate this is what is known as the folate trap if you take high amount of uh, the folic acid then this uh, uh, b12 deficiency which is causing the folate trap may get mass the megaloblastic anemia will uh, recover which is the characteristic finding of both the folate deficiency and the b12 deficiency folate supplementation in individuals with pre neoplastic colorectal polyp has shown increased incidence of the colorectal cancer so you have to be careful you cannot blindly give the b9 supplementation to all the individuals particularly who are uh, more than 40 years of age lastly we come to vitamin b12 b12 the cobalamin there are two enzymes which require the b12 the methyl malonyl coenzyme a mutase we had seen it converts the methyl malonyl coenzyme a to the succinyl coenzyme a and the methionine synthase we had seen this was the enzyme for the metabolism of sulfur containing amino acids okay so methyl malonyl where it is formed it is formed as an intermediate of catabolism of valine it is formed by the carboxylation of propenyl coenzyme a we had seen the propenyl coenzyme a can come from the odd number of fatty acid fatty acid with odd number of carbon chain it can come from catabolism of isoleucine it can come from the catabolism of cholesterol lastly it can directly come from propionate these are the sources of methyl malonyl coenzyme a which is acted upon by the mutase enzyme to convert it to the succinyl coenzyme a we had seen this reaction when we are doing the metabolism of fatty acid with odd number of carbon atoms the b12 is found in food of only animal origin so purely vegetarian individuals are likely to have the vitamin b12 deficiency however in the human population in sorry in the indian population the b12 deficiency is rare in spite of the whole population being vegetarian why because none of the uh, indians are vegetarian they consume milk milk is of animal origin and strictly speaking they are not vegetarian they are lacto vegetarian they consume vegetarian diet along with milk the milk is of animal origin and it is able to meet the requirement of vitamin b12 so vitamin b12 deficiency is rare in indians because of large consumption of the uh milk in western population and the american population where strictly vegan people are there there the vitamin b12 deficiency can be seen it is a result of the dietary fat where they are not consuming even a single type of animal product and there we will see the vitamin b12 deficiency importantly vitamin b12 absorption requires uh, two binding proteins first is the cobalophilin which is being uh, released in the enzyme in the stomach the cobalophilin and second the intrinsic factor so the cobalophilin will bind in the in, uh, uh, mouth and it will protect from uh, the uh, digestive enzyme in the stomach and later on the intrinsic factor coming from the stomach will bind to the b12 in the small intestine and get absorbed at the level of the ileum vitamin b12 is a cobalt containing vitamin 
it is a cobalt containing vitamin this question has been asked which of the following vitamins is a cobalt containing vitamin so the answer will be vitamin b12 deficiency causes methyl malonic aciduria we had mentioned this uh, when uh, we are doing the metabolism of hot chain fatty acid and we said that it, this uh, methyl malonic aciduria is used as a means of assessing the b12 status it is used as a means for assessing the b12 status the b12 deficiency causes pernicious anemia okay it causes the pernicious anemia in pernicious anemia a more common cause is the failure of the absorption of vitamin b12 the b12 absorption occurs only in the ileum so because of multiple reasons there can be failure of absorption typically the dietary deficiency is not seen until unless you are following a dietary fad so how can uh, this uh, uh, deficient this failure in absorption occur see there are multiple ways in the mouth uh, for example suppose some individual is not producing secretion in the mouth the cobalophyllin is not there so b12 will be degraded in the stomach if there is atrophic gastritis the intrinsic factor is not being produced the again the b12 will not bind with the intrinsic factor it cannot be absorbed in the ileum suppose a person has had an injury and his ileum has to be resected because of any reason either due to injury or because of the bariatric surgery or something so if the ileum is not there again the b12 absorption cannot occur so multiple ways in which the b12 absorption can be affected and this is asked in the clinical scenario a person had a road traffic accident where he had a, a penetrating abdominal injury on the surgical uh, surgery table the surgeon had to remove the ileum because of the gross rupture of the ileum subsequently this individual uh, during recovery developed the deficiency of one of the vitamins which vitamin is likely to be deficient so in that case your answer will be vitamin b12 so multiple ways in which the failure in absorption of vitamin b12 can be there so like i said the deficiency causes pernicious anemia it has two features first the megaloblastic anemia which is similar to the deficiency in the b9 but second thing is the irreversible degeneration of the spinal cord due to failure of methylation of arginine residue in the myelin protein in the myelin basic protein in the myelin basic protein we require the methylation of arginine for which the b12 is required for which the b12 is required so uh, when we are uh, when we are talking about the folate trap we said when you give the large supplementation of the b9 the megaloblastic anemia will get corrected but the irreversible degeneration of the spinal cord will get exaggerated because more of b12 will now be directed towards the recycling of whatever supplementation of the b9 you have given a quick recap of b12 it is uh, required what is happening okay okay quick recap of the b12 the methyl malonyl coenzyme a mutase and the methionine synthase are the two uh, enzymes which require vitamin b12 the methyl malonyl coenzyme a which is acted upon by the mutase can be formed via multiple reactions for example it is an intermediate of catabolism of valine it is produced by the carboxylation of propenyl coenzyme a the propenyl coenzyme a itself is arising through the catabolism of isoleucine the cholesterol and the rare fatty acid with the odd number of carbon atoms lastly it can directly come from a propionate the vitamin b12 is found only in foods of animal origin 
vitamin B12 absorption requires two binding proteins the cobalophilin produced in the mouth and the intrinsic factor produced by the stomach cobalt is present in the vitamin B12 deficiency of B12 causes methyl malonic aciduria which is used as a means of assessing the B12 status the most common cause of pernicious anemia is a failure of absorption not the dietary deficiency but the failure of absorption which can occur at the multiple levels that we talked if there is problem in the mouth cobalophilin is not being produced if there is problem in the stomach the uh, intrinsic factor is not being produced if the problem is in ileum where the absorption has to occur deficiency uh, causes pernicious anemia which has the two features megaloblastic anemia and irreversible degeneration of the spinal cord which uh, is due to failure of methylation of arginine residue in the myelin basic protein in the myelin basic protein and last we come to vitamin c again vitamin c will be discussed in great detail deficiency in uh, uh, pediatrics because it causes the condition known as scurvy but what are the biochemical aspects that you should know about i'll quickly take a look at them vitamin c is a vitamin for only few animals for human beings and some of the other primates along with guinea pig bat passiviform birds fishes and invertebrates in other animals it can be synthesized in the organisms mentioned above the enzyme l glonolactone oxidase is the only missing enzyme all other enzymes of vitamin c biosynthetic pathway are present accidental deletion of the gene l glonolactone oxidase results in vitamin c becoming a vitamin in the above mentioned organisms the ascorbic acid and dehydroascorbic acid both have the vitamin activity the deficiency of vitamin c causes scurvy it is one of the very important antioxidant it is maintained in the reduced state by glutathione and vitamin c also helps in the absorption of iron it also helps in the absorption of iron important role of vitamin c vitamin c is having an important role it is a coenzyme for copper containing hydroxylases and alpha ketoglutarate linked iron containing hydroxylases for both these hydroxylases it is working as the coenzyme which are these enzymes the dopamine beta hydroxylase copper containing the peptidyl glycine hydroxylase copper containing the proline and lysine hydroxylase for collagen the proline hydroxylase for osteocalcin and the c1q component of complement the aspartate beta hydroxylase for protein c synthesis and the trimethyl lysine and gamma beta rubetine hydroxylase for synthesis of carnitine for the synthesis of carnitine so these are some of the enzymes for which vitamin c is required the dopamine beta hydroxylase peptidyl glycine hydroxylase the proline and lysine hydroxylase the proline hydroxylase for osteocalcin and c1q component the aspartate beta hydroxylase for protein c the trimethyl lysine and gamma butyrobetaine hydroxylase okay so that will be all from the section of uh, vitamins please note that vitamins is now a very very important section for your exam for example in the last neat exam we had eight questions coming from vitamin uh, four from the lipid soluble vitamins and four from the water soluble vitamins so vitamins has become a very very important focus uh, for the examiners and it is a very high yield topic you can revise it quickly in 10 15 minutes and you're likely to get up uh, get up to three to six questions from this section of vitamins so please don't forget to revise vitamins before you go for the exam it is mostly a revision based very little to understand here mostly you have to quickly revise and keep in touch with the content of the vitamins
tomorrow we'll have the session at same time 8 to 11 and tomorrow we'll start the molecular value section we'll need about three sessions to complete the molecular value session we'll see if it gets completed in two very good if it doesn't get completed then we'll extend it to three in the third session we'll also be talking a little bit about uh, techniques techniques of protein separation the pcr etc so some techniques have to be discussed we'll do on the last day of the session if there's some additional topics or points which you will want to have a look at just uh, uh, let me know in the next three classes so that we can cover them in the last session anything you want to ask or any part you want me to repeat from today's class if not then we'll uh, call it a day and uh, close it for now any questions any questions you want to ask? Any questions that you want to ask? If there are no questions, then we'll call it a day. Okay, so if there are no questions, we'll 